Hi, I'm Hyomi Akura from University of Tsukuba. Today, I'm happy to present our work, AI for Human Assessment. What do professional assessors need? This work was done with Riku Arakawa from Carnegie Mellon University and also done in collaboration with a Japanese AI venture company, ACES. Human assessment is a process that aims to evaluate and make decisions on candidates regarding their suitability for certain types of employment. The assessment process involves multiple methods such as job-related simulations, interviews, and psychological tests. Among them, interviews are commonly used to use in which professional assessors conduct short interviews with candidate employees. In such cases, the assessment typically consists of two phases. In the interview phase, an assessor plays a certain role to evaluate how the candidate employee behaves in the given scenario through a one-on-one -on -one interview. For example, to examine the skills as a manager, an assessor plays a role of subordinate who is not satisfied with their current job. To profoundly examine employees' behaviors, assessors are required to act well to simulate plausible situations that are difficult for the employee. This interview phase usually lasts for approximately 10 to 50 minutes and is video recorded. In the, in in the review phase, the assessor plays back the recorded video of the interview phase. This review phase usually lasts for 30 minutes. Here, they inspect the employee's behavior, both verbal and non-verbal, and try to find cues for evaluating, evaluating the employee. Then they make decisions on the employee's skills and suitability for certain jobs. To identify the requirements in building supporting tool for human assessment, we first conducted a workshop with assessors from a Japanese human assessment company. This company conducts approximately 2,000 assessment sessions annually and has a history of more than 25 years. Through the workshop, we first identified difficulties that professional assessors face. On one hand, they mentioned that the review phase is time consuming and mentally demanding, which challenges them in maintaining stable observation of employees' behavior. On the other hand, they raise a concern regarding the subjectivity in observing employees' behaviors. Then, as a core topic of the workshop, we discussed about how AI systems can support professional assessors' decision making, especially in the review phase. Interestingly, the assessors were skeptical about AI-based end-to-end decision making because human assessment should consider various factors specific to each employee. Therefore, they assumed that such highly human contextual decisions are difficult to be done by computers, which we agreed. Instead, the assessors expected AI systems to help them not miss important behavior cues due to their subjectivity or mental demands during the time-consuming processes. Then the assessors can revise their judgment by taking the contextual meaning of such AI-detected cues into consideration. This workshop guided us to the idea of separating observation, which is done by AIs, and judgment, which is done by professionals. Actually, the idea came from the field of executive coaching, in which a non-verbal behavior analysis algorithm is used to observe people in conversation. As shown here, it can extract scenes of exceptional responses of employees in contrast to their normal status. Also, we preferred this algorithm because it can provide clear visualization of the detected cues. We then conducted a feasibility study to determine whether such an observational support is actually beneficial for assessors using 20 interview videos from actual assessment scenes. As a result, we found that the algorithm does not completely replicate the assessor's annotation. This is partial because of the false positive detection of the algorithm, but also because of the assessor's subjectivity. While the final decision is consistent, the tools they focus on to make the decision were varied. However, the assessors found that the algorithm would facilitate the assessment. 
This was, this was largely owing to the interpretable output of the algorithm. It guided them to inform the reason behind the detection, questioning their decisions. In other words, it helped maintain the assessor's trust in the case of false positives and make the assessors open-minded about leveraging the detection results. Lastly, we developed a dedicated interface incorporating the algorithm and evaluated its effectiveness and usability. This figure shows the interface we developed. An interview video is embedded in its center part, along with a sequence bar on which pins indicating the detected anomaly points are placed. We showed pins corresponding to the top six scenes based on the calculated outlierness. The darker pins indicate scenes with top three outlierness, while the lighter pins indicate scenes from the fourth to sixth. We involved six professional assessors who had not participated in the previous workshop. Two of them were junior assessors with experience of fewer than five years, while others were senior assessors with experience of more than 10 years. Each assessor was asked to review four interview videos with a prototype. After they finished reviewing all videos, we conducted a video-based semi-structured interview in which we asked questions regarding the usability of the interface and its expected roles in the actual workflow. As a result, assessors described that their process of the assessment was supported by the prototype in several ways. In particular, they felt that the objectivity of the decision was enhanced with support, as they mentioned that the prototype showed some cues to which they would not have paid attention without it, which is corresponding to false positive cases of the algorithm. They described that such suggestions provide them a moment to reflect on the evaluation and some of the cues were actually informative to their final decision. The second aspect is that they gained confidence with the cues they used matched with the AI suggestions, which is true positive. This point was stressed by the junior assessors who sometimes do not have full confidence in the decisions. They appreciated that they could base their subjective feeling on the AI's outputs that are objectively quantified through unsupervised learning. Interestingly, they did not lose confidence when the cues they used were not in the AI suggestions, which is in their first negative cases. They understood that human assessment is a difficult task for AIs with many human contexts, and therefore it is natural that AIs cannot detect some cues. One of the junior assessors mentioned that they resolved to such cases but could easily resolve the conflict by referring to other signals such as verbal information. In other words, the assessors understood the mechanism and the role of the AI and successfully used it for complementary for their decision. The result includes other interesting points such as room for improvement of the prototype and potential use scenarios. For details, please refer to the paper. If he had started developing an algorithm to capture informative cues in the paradigm of supervised classification, it would not have worked effectively in concert with professional assessors. First, it was suggested that different assessors look at different cues while having the same assessment result. This inconsistency and unclear boundaries of classes make it difficult to prepare a dataset to train the model. Moreover, even if we could train such a model based on supervised learning, it would lack interpretability and validity in its output, hindering the assessors from constructing a mental model about the behavior of the AI model. This would result in the failure of establishing trust in human-AI relationships, leading the assessors to ignore the output of the model due to false positives. In contrast, our approach allowed assessors to benefit even from false positive detections. Given these points, we conclude that the separation of observation and interpretation made possible by unsupervised anomaly detection will be a promising approach to building human-AI collaboration, especially in highly contextual domains that inevitably require human decision. Lastly, I want to mention the limitations and future work of this case study. First, the findings were obtained from studies with a single assessment company, which might introduce a bias in the assessor's responses. We also acknowledge that the number of assessors who participated in this uh, workshop was comparatively small. To further investigate the role of AI in human assessment, future work is desirable to be conducted by involving more assessors from different enterprises. We also would like to quantitatively explore how the introduction of the AI-based system affected the final evaluation of the assessors. Such exploration would inform us of the contextual factors of evaluation, such as the prospective capabilities of employees. While the current system entrusts the consideration of such factors to assessors, investigating how it can further contribute to the assessor's decision-making would be a promising approach.
Thank you for listening to the talk.